The recently concluded parliament session was momentous. Several bills greatly advancing the agenda of the BJP and allies in the Sangh Parivar were passed. Spotlight is on abrogation of Article 370 and snatching statehood from Jammu and Kashmir. But other legislations too need to be recalled. The amendment to the Right to Information Act mutilated the original law. Yet another bill, now a law, is the amendment to the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act or the UAPA. Legislations which give sweeping powers to the state to label citizens or their groups is undemocratic. In more than half a century of its existence, UAPA has been misused repeatedly to crush people's movements. The government can now unilaterally designate any individual as terrorist and jail the person without trial or conviction. The National Investigation Agency or NIA now has powers to investigate cases falling under the domain of state police. This will weaken India's federal character and result in greater centralization. Individual citizens and organizations raising uncomfortable questions will be more vulnerable to intrusive arms of the state. The new law may well be the last nail in the coffin of free speech, political dissent and even mild criticism. Watching India today, I am reminded of events exactly a century ago. In April, the government marked the centenary of the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. Leaders shed copious amounts of tears in memory of martyrs. Little mention was however made about the backdrop to the assembly in Amritsar on Baisakhi day. No leader of this government reminded people that hundreds of Innocent people were gunned down because British officials feared the nationwide campaign against the Rollat Act. Passed by the Imperial Council in London in March 1919, the Act indefinitely extended emergency measures enacted during the First World War. This law criminalized dissent and tried alleged dissidents without juries and in camera. The press and public were excluded from these trials. The law empowered the government to designate anyone a terrorist. A person could be jailed without trial for up to two years. A Lahore newspaper gave one of the most famous headlines ever. No vakil, no dalil, no appeal. The setting was perfect for Mahatma Gandhi to take the lead. The role at act or the role at Satyagraha was the first all India upsurge against British colonialism. Despite the Jallianwala massacre, the role at Satyagraha continued and eventually forced the British government to repeal the law. I will discuss similarities and dissimilarities between India now and a hundred years ago with my old friend Rizwan Kesar. He teaches at the Jamia Millia Islamia. This one, let's talk about. I have talked about a bit of similarities. I want to hear from you the similarities as well as dissimilarities. What lessons can we learn from what happened in 1919? Right. Uh, very quickly, two dissimilarities. Yeah. One, in 1919, we have an alien government. That's right. A colonial government. In 2019, we have a sovereign government. That's right. We became independent in 47 and journey of 70, 72 years has is still actually yeah. nothing in the life of a nation. Number two, Gandhi responded to the Royal Attack not after its enactment. As a matter of Gandhi had started preparing a yes. kind of an opposition even while 
the legal processes were on exactly you know the matter he did not wait for it to become he, law he, he did not wait for it to become law right so right in the month of march 1919 gandhi had started mobilizing exactly. communicating with all kinds of people including the viceroy and other government officials about the draconian nature of rollet bills which right. were under consideration to become an act and that is where gandhi said mind you gandhi is someone who in 1916 and 17 is a kind of a friend of the british that's right in the sense if you look at gandhi's appeal for to gujarati young men to join the british indian exactly. army in the context of the, the first, first world, world war. war now turns against the government turns against the government in the hope that people will rise against such draconian okay, law people, number number 2 yeah, yeah. unfortunately there is another dissimilarity indian members of the imperial legislative council unanimously spoke against the bills when they were under consideration saying that it right. will straight away eat into individuals civil rights then all such a position was ignored the unfortunate dissimilarity is that in parliament even though lot of people raised such voice even that time people had recommended its reference to select committee right this time claim to or demand to refer it to the select committee was rejected on the floor of the rajya sabha i think that's another the floor of the rajya sabha also because of a lot of opposition members going along with the this, government that's, proposal that's that no the question is that then it was a nation in the making right. today we are already a nation in the made one fears hmm. are we into some kind of reverse journey another thing that we have to then we were we as a nation indians were fighting for our democratic rights hmm. and to earn sovereignty now today the world known as knows as india's uh, world's biggest democracy in world's biggest democracy you have a draconian law hmm. by way of you know amendment but then the very fact that amendment has been enacted we realize With very little opposition is so vulnerable not only because of the government but also because of the collusion of the large number of opposition now let's try to go back to 1990 and try to understand the political process of that time you had the first world war in which a large number of indians participated in the war after that they felt that the measures which had been imposed by the british would be taken off but they were not this is also the time that there was there was actually no national movement at that time gandhi after his return you know he had just gone on a what we call you know the the the, the bharat yatra you know where he went across and very poignantly uh, shot in uh, richard attenborough's film the gandhi what really propelled the british to enact the roll attack what were they scared of uh, uh two things number yeah. one the british had extracted a lot of resources from india to supply fund to their, the fund their, fund fund their war. war resources economic resources food hmm. whatever etc etc they had mobilized large large number of human resource right in order to supply them to sustain the war in different places right and this had led to a lot of misery in different parts of india very especially in the punjab hmm. because punjab was the kind of a backbone of supplies right man supply manpower supplies as well as other kinds of resources no after the war ended hmm. everybody was so uneasy they had started you know like rising in mini rebellion of kind Right. is it that too much of repression that has taken place now mind you indians were subjected to all kinds of humiliation they were made to crawl in the streets of different cities of punjab right. and therefore it doesn't come as a surprise that roller satyagraha as launched by mahatma gandhi had reverberation in different parts of india including in punjab but punjab there was a massive concentration precisely because 
there was this upsurge among and that is the why Punjabis. general dyer got scared that this general dyer, peaceful the whole assembly Punjab administration is actually a political scared. demonstration whole whole and that is where the declaration of the martial law right in especially in punjab they didn't declare martial law in any other city of india but in punjab they declared it martial law and made any such assembly an act in illegality uh, rizwan the Possibly the biggest dissimilarity between 1990 and 2019 is that there is no Gandhi amongst us. That's very true. Uh, but we let's try to understand how did Gandhi awaken a people who did not understand modern political concepts like freedom of speech, uh, dis dissension, dissidence. These are you know, freedom. These were ideas which were alien to an Indian India which was still undergoing a social transition from a semi-feudal country into a modern country where democracy as an idea had not yet become uh, there was no consensus on it as a political philosophy how did Gandhi do it if I can use one word yeah. I would say courage okay Gandhi's courage is uh, inimitable for variety of reasons. He got it from within or from the people? All he got it from within. And then was he, he was hoping that people would respond. Mind you, the time he decided to launch Rollet Satyagare, he didn't have any mechanism of support from the Congress you know, party. The social Congress party, there is absolutely Virtually, no Virtually, Virtually, there with, nothing with, with the Congress party. Yeah. All that, you know, like Gandhi succeeded in mobilizing is the existing network of Home Rule League movement as launched by Lokmanya Tilak and right. Mrs. Annie Besant. Mm. That's uh, the only kind of tentative kind of a network. Mm -hmm. Already, you know, Home Rule League movements had died down quite a while ago, but they were surviving. Gandhi was able to mobilize that. But mind you, Gandhi was mm. also into building new networks. Yes. And mind you, in say, place like Delhi, Dr. Mukhtar Ahmad Ansari, in Punjab, you have Saifuddin, uh, Saifuddin Kichlu and Dr. Exactly. Satpal. A large number of And it was their people. arrest, you know, which actually angered people in Punjab, which led to such a massive congregation but then, on Baisakh. And mind you, the launching of the Satyagraha movement wasn't an abrupt thing. First thing that he decided was to establish a small body called Satyagraha Sabha. Right. With the help then of Satyagraha. Then they took Satyagraha, the Satyagraha pledge. Both. Pl then pledge. The pledge. Pledge that the Indians will not submit to this draconian And will law. seek freedom until the time freedom is not you know, given to them, they shall continue to court her still the and, time at least the role and, 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 and Gandhi in his very characteristic style kept on communicating with the viceroy of the time right. that very soon he would be launching Satyagraha of the kind that he did. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you can say, people say mother courage, I would say father courage. Gandhi, Gandhi was an embodiment of that courage and it is personal courage of Gandhi which mobilize you large know, number of people know, against this know, draconian law. You know, if you go back to available material of that time, what was going through Gandhi? What was he writing in letters, in various speeches which he was making? You know, some innate political wisdom. He tells the British in one of the letters that he writes is that no matter how autocratic you are, you will ultimately have to bow to the will of the ordinary people. You know, such immense political wisdom and confidence that ultimately people's will will prevail. I think these are great lessons for modern democracies across the world, which is seeing a huge wave of populist nationalism, nationalism, which is basically, you know, being used to consolidate power and impose authoritarian regimes across several countries in the world. Two very quick points, uh, yeah. Nilanjan. If one was to go through even today, the Hind Swaraj that Gandhi first wrote in Gujarati, exactly. translated yes. into English a year later. So it is like 1908, 1909. Right. Very interesting observation that he makes. He said that it is not that the British had won us. They were not victorious over us. We handed over India mm -hmm. to them. Right. So in a way, what he is implying is that what you did in the past, handing over India to them, hmm. is time for you to reclaim. Number two, right. very interesting observation, equally interesting observation that he makes in Hind Swaraj. 
fine now that the british have become the rulers hmm. they better serve us according to the wishes of the people hmm. mind you something like this somebody talking as early as 1908 1909 when it shows the tremendous has, understanding of politics not only tremendous understanding the very fact that he is showing a mirror to the british right he gandhi has not returned from south africa to india yet right. i mean after all india is the motherland south africa is not but i would say as regards gandhi's politics hmm. while india was his matribhumi south africa had become the karmabhumi and gandhi was able to derive a lot of his strength from his cultural background and from the kind of political self training that he had in south africa that gave gandhi courage to show that mirror to the british that you better serve the people not that you have become master mm-hmm. uh here so in a way you know like we handed over india to them right and therefore by you know like implication saying you can reclaim your sovereignty exactly from them and mind you it grows into another phase of very interesting movement gandhi decided to call the bluff of the british say that right. we are not going to cooperate with you in 1920 exactly so 1990 you know, and 1920 they are very very close time you frame. know immediately after the jallianwala bag the focus shifted away from the rollet act because immediately the attention was on the carnage and on the investigations the hunter commission various things happened but it must be said you know that the nationalist leaders of that time did not lose sight that these laws must go rollet cannot continue they kept the pressure on eventually forcing the british to actually repeal the act in 22 how did this process happen what was it a sustained pressure how was this pressure created uh one very interesting development that took place as a consequence of jallianwala bag massacre that the british parliament debated the issue right. extensively and the prime minister at that point time and lot many other leaders they all made speeches is that what has happened in jallianwala bag is terrible hmm. and uh, there's one political leader uh, i shall get the name of that gentleman who made that speech on the floor of the parliament that for the rest of your life you may go on claiming that you have done great things to india hmm. and the moment you make these claims any indian will come and give you a tight slap off janiyawala hmm. bag massacre because it was so unprovoked right and in a way in a way it disturbed the british conscience also because after all they had the pretensions of of being, being a liberal democracy of, being the mother of democracy and, and a liberal democracy and liberal democracy and they were also you know sort of propagating that we have been able to extend democratic institutions to india and there you realize that you have done such a dastardly and barbaric thing right. that those paper global condemnation all global condem- condemnation and all that so in a way british parliament was also seized of the matter apart from the fact that the next year that is 1990 the same year 1919 the annual session of the indian national congress was held in right. amritsar, amritsar in order to express solidarity with the people and of punjab and by the time gandhi had you know brought in also the khilafat movement into a, the there was a lot of f- fermentation in the country right in, in terms of political mobilization and the possibility of mounting another movement etc so in a way this massacre did not deter indians as a matter of fact it emboldened them hmm. moreover the white washing of the hunter commission hmm. that was further indication of the fact that the colonial institution cared two hoots about indians right to civil liberties and their democratic rights so in a way in a way you know the morality question also came in even for the british politicians just not in india but in england and they finally they saw that there was hardly any room for its success right i have not been able to understand the question in the in the contemporary context civil liberties was not a talking point 100 years ago but for the last 40 years at least it has been a major reference point all the time you have had virtually every political party you know saying that civil liberties have to be upheld everyone in this country keeps talking about the very dark days during emergency when fundamental rights were curbed by the people and we keep saying that never again there shall be emergency yet when we talked about jallianwala bag just 3 months ago why is it that the opposition to rollet act 
did not become part of the national discourse around that time? Is it because the leaders of today do not want people to remember what all Indians fought in the past and not just that it was not only a fight against the British to remove them from the country, but they fought on very basic issues which included freedom of speech. As a matter of fact, if you look at the provisions of, uh, you know, the amended uh, component of... You'll find very disturbing parallels. Very, very disturbing parallels and also uh, uh, the kind of clauses which are there, in a way, extremely frightening. Right. In the sense, it's the same thing. It's like, na vakil, na appeal, na dalil. If you look at the government who declare anybody a terrorist and can pick up that person, right. and then the same thing what the paper... Headline, na koi you put a label na, that label, he is a table, it. you know, for the last several years, we have been listening to one label after another, you know, you have anti-national, you have urban naxals, you have just no, no, about I'm, anything I'm, that you can mind think you, of. Mind you, there has been a tendency, especially in the realm of state agencies, to consolidate more and more power. But the fact that it is being done on the democratic floor of India's parliament, where such and tendencies Parliament is party to it. Parliament is party to it. In a way, that time, it was an alien government. Here is our own government. Here is our own parliamentarians. And they care two hoots. Tomorrow, they can turn around. Legal process is being short-circuited. Legal process was, mind you, those two bills. One particularly talked about short-circuiting the legal process. Mm. One was to prevent any such activity from taking place. Number two was to short circuit the legal process. The amended portion of UAPA is actually to short circuit the legal process. Nobody knows. They say that there are four tiers of checks and balances. Right. But then those four tiers can be torn apart if the government decides so to declare anybody, right. any group, any such, uh, you know, like formation or terrorist organization. So, in a way, it's too draconian a law to be yeah. adopted in the year 2019 when, number one, institutions are strong, individuals are far more aware, and citizens must be more empowered with civil and democratic rights. And here you realize here is a piece of legislation which undermines all that India has stood for for the last 72 years. And if you stretch it back from the time of 1919, India that mm. you and I have known has been consistently fighting and that is where we feel that the parliamentarians have not really stood with the people of India. Well, thank you Rizwan, uh, you know, for uh, shedding light on what had happened in 1919, 100 years ago in India and what is not happening in India in contemporary times. Rizwan Kesar, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Time flies. That's what they say. A hundred years have passed since the agitation over Rollet Act triggered the eventual demise of the British Raj. This year is the 150th birth anniversary year of Mahatma Gandhi. The Prime Minister has asked his party MPs to undertake 150 km padyatras through their constituencies. It would also be nice if he asks people to abide by the spirit of Gandhi's pledge of April 1919. Thank you so much for watching this program. Thank <laughs> you.